हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल और आज का जो हम टॉपिक डिस्कस करेंगे हम सॉवरेनिटी के बारे में बात करेंगे हमें पता है कि अन अकेडमी का जो यूपीएससी सी एस सी सब्सक्रिप्शन है वो बहुत ही लिमिटेड पीरियड ऑफ टाइम के लिए है और इसमें आपको सिर्फ टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा तो आपको ये कोड अप्लाई करना है सिंपली ताकि आपको टेन का ऑफर मिले और जब तक उसके बाद ये प्राइस जो है वो बहुत ज़्यादा इंक्रीज हो जाएगा तो आप बिल्कुल अपना टाइम मत वेस्ट करिए और तुरंत ये डिस्काउंट लिए और आपको ये कोड यूज करना है उसके बाद अन अकेडमी एस्पायर ऑल इंडिया फ्री मॉक टेस्ट मॉक टेस्ट प्रोवाइड कर रहा है सारे सिविल एस्पिरेंट को जिसमें यू पी एस सी एस सी ट्रिल्स उसमें पेपर वन जे में और ये एवरी टेंथ और ट्वेंटी ऑफ एवरी मंथ कंडक्ट करेंगे और इसके साथ साथ आपको एक्साइटिंग प्राइजेस मिलेगा स्कॉलरशिप्स मिलेगा जो टॉप फिफ्टी रैंक होल्डर्स हैं और ये टेंथ अक्टूबर को कंडक्ट हुआ है वन सब्सक्रिप्शन एंड अनलिमिटेड बेनिफिट्स अब हमें इस पैकेज में बहुत सारे बेनिफिट्स मिलते हैं सिर्फ एक सब्सक्रिप्शन के साथ जैसे कि हम अपने घर से लर्न कर सकते हैं पढ़ सकते हैं अनलिमिटेड एक्सेस मिल सकता है सारे कोर्सेज में टॉप एजुकेटर्स है सारे एक प्लेटफॉर्म पे फुल सिलेबस कवरेज है डबल लाउट सेशन है लाइव टेस्ट सीरीज है स्टडी मटेरियल भी आपको पीडीएफ फॉर्मेट में मिलेगा उसके बाद हम आपको प्रॉपर आंसर राइटिंग सेशंस भी देंगे जो सारे मेंटर और गाइडेंस के अंडर ही होगा एंड दिस इज आल्सो वन स्टॉप सॉल्यूशन फॉर योर कंप्लीट यूपीएससी सीएससी प्रिपरेशन जिसमें आपको स्ट्रक्चर्ड बैचेस के साथ टॉप एजुकेटर्स बैचेस इन हिंदी इंग्लिश बाइलिंगुअल लेट नाइट एज वेल एज टू ईयर बैचेस हंड्रेड परसेंट सिलेबस कवरेज वास्ट रेंज ऑफ ऑप्शनल प्रिलिम्स मेन टेस्ट सीरीज डबल डाउट क्लियरिंग सेशन डेली करंट अफेयर प्रैक्टिस एस ए एन आंसर राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस परफॉर्मेंस एनालिसिस भी देंगे साथ में और आपके इसमें इंटरव्यू uh, में भी बहुत ज़्यादा हेल्प करेगा क्योंकि आपको इंटरव्यू प्रिपरेशन भी यहाँ पर इस पैकेज में मिलेगी तो इस पैकेज में बहुत सारे बेनिफिट्स हैं अगर आप अब भी सब्सक्राइब करते हैं आपको 10% परसेंट ऑफ मिलेगा आपको बस ये कोड अप्लाई करना है एस आई एम पी एल ई वाई टी और आपको सब्सक्रिप्शन मिलेगा 10% परसेंट ऑफ अन अकेडमी चैंपियंस कॉन्क्लेव एक पावर पैक सेशन के साथ था जो सिर्फ टॉपर्स ऑफ यू पी एस सी सी एस सी टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन के साथ था और इस कॉन्क्लेव में एक काफी मस्ट uh, अटेंड रहा है जो जितने भी सारे यू पी एस सी के सी एस सी एस्पिरेंट रहे हैं और उसके साथ साथ ये काफी सक्सेसफुल रहा है कंडक्ट करने में अपने एग्जाम जिसमें आपको फ्री टू अटेंड कॉन्क्लेव है जिसमें एक दिन हमने सिर्फ डेडिकेट करा है कि हम प्रिपरेशन जर्नी जान सके 2019 के टॉपर्स से आप हमारे उनकी ट्रिप टिप्स और ट्रिक्स भी मिल सके और जिन लोगों ने ये क्रैक करा है तो बेसिकली ये बहुत ज़्यादा हेल्पफुल रहा है काफ़ी सारे यू पी एस सी एस्पिरेंट में एस्पिरेंट्स को और यहाँ पे फोर्टीन टॉपर्स थे टेन एजुकेटर्स थे और फोर्टीन टॉक्स और डिस्कशंस थे उसके बाद आपको पता है कि हम आपको डेली करंट अफेयर टेस्ट सीरीज दे रहे हैं जो कम्प्लीटली फ्री है जो आपको डेली 7:30 पे मिलेगा और 20 क्वेश्चंस है 20 मिनट्स है और आपके आपको ये 40 मार्क्स टोटल है इसका जो कवरेज है और आपको इसके साथ साथ हम टेस्ट एनालिसिस देंगे जिसमें आपको पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव दोनों के बारे बताएं कि आपके कौन से इनकरेक्ट हैं और कौन से आपके करेक्ट आंसर्स हैं तो आपको इन डेप्थ एनालिसिस मिलेगा अपना अगर आपको हमारा चैनल बहुत अच्छा लगा हो तो आप YouTube अन अकेडमी आर्टिकुलेट टेलीग्राम और Facebook पे भी ज्वाइन कर सकते हो सो लेट स्टार्ट हम सबसे पहले जानेंगे कि सॉवरेनिटी का मीनिंग क्या है मतलब उसका मतलब क्या है तो जो सॉवरेनिटी है वो काफ़ी ज़्यादा एसेंशियल एलिमिनेट एलिमेंट है एक स्टेट के लिए क्यों क्योंकि पहला तो ये जो है ये जो सॉवरेनिटी टर्म है वो हमने लैटिन वर्ड से ड्राइव करी है और इसका मतलब होता है सुप्रीम अब जो सॉवरेनिटी है उसका मतलब होता है सुप्रीमसी और जिसके यहाँ सुप्रीम पावर है जो हम स्टेट के बारे में रेफरेंस में बात करते हैं उसका ये जो आइडिया है जो सॉवरेन का आइडिया है तो उसमें सॉवरेन कोई भी हो सकता है मोनार्क हो सकता है चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव हो सकता है असम्बली हो सकती है और इसको हम डिक्लेयर भी कर सकते हैं लॉ हम यहाँ पे इशू कमांड्स भी आते हैं फिर हम इनके पॉलिटिकल डिसीजंस भी लेते हैं इसमें हम इनके साथ साथ हम डिटरमाइन करते हैं हमारे जितने भी पब्लिक गोल्स हैं और उनके साथ साथ हम प्रायोरिटीज को भी विच आर बाइंडिंग ऑल इंडिविजुअल्स एंड एसोसिएशन विद इन जिस जूडिस्टिक्शन सो ही ऑल्सो लाइक कमांड्स इट विद फिजिकल फोर्स टू पनिश एंड दोज हु इग्नोर और डिसोबे हिज ऑर्डर्स एंड डिसीजन तो इसमें जो सॉवरेन है वो फिजिकल फोर्स भी यूज कर सकता है उनको पनिश करने के लिए 
और उनको जो इग्नोर कर रहे हैं या फिर उनका जो रूल या फिर जो ऑर्डर है वो डिसओबे कर रहे हैं फॉलो नहीं कर रहे हैं उसका जो सॉवरेन इश्यूज ऑफ लॉ है हम बात करते हैं कि वो इशू करते हैं लॉस कमांड डिसीजन और ये सब उनके फ्री विल में होता अपने ओन विल में होता है और इसमें किसी की अप्रूवल की जरूरत नहीं होती ना किसी की कंसेंट की और एनी अदर इंडिविजुअल और एसोसिएशन सो देफोर सॉवरेनिटी इज इट प्योरेस्ट फॉर्म बाई बेनिफिटिंग ऑफ मुनार नैन एन असेंबली और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सेटअप बट इट हैज टू बी अप्लाइड टू वेरियस सिस्टम सो दैट एज इट इज एक्सेप्टेड एज ए यूनिवर्सल कैटरिस्टिक्स ऑफ अ स्टेट तो सॉवरेनिटी जो है वो हम एक यूनिवर्सल कैटरिस्टिक्स देखते हैं स्टेट के अंदर ही देखेंगे अब हम बात करते हैं जो सॉवरेनिटी है वो बेसिकली स्टेट के बारे में बात करता है जिसके बाद सुप्रीम लीगल अथॉरिटी होती है अभी जो सिक्री सुप्रीम लीगल अथॉरिटी होती है वो इंटरनल और एक्सटर्नल स्पेयर्स में बात करते हैं तो इंटरनली हम किससे बात करते हैं कि ये इस्टेब्लिश करता है सुप्रीमसी ऑफ अ स्टेट है जो ओवरऑल इंडिविजुअल्स है और एसोसिएशन भी हैं उसके बाद एक्सटर्नल के थ्रू इसलिए होता है कि ये अपहोल्ड करता है इंडिपेंडेंस और जो स्टेट की है जो फ्रॉम कंट्रोल है इंटरफेरेंस है जो कंडक्ट हुई है जितने भी इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन में है तो एक में तो हम बात करते हैं कि जो इंटरनल है वो उनके खुद के वो अंदर देखते हैं कि उनके कंट्री के स्टेट के जो इंडिविजुअल एसोसिएशन और कैसे हैं एक्सटर्नल हम बात में मतलब बाउंड्रीज के बारे में बात करते हैं कि उनके बेसिकली uh, uh, क्या कंट्रोल और क्या इंटरफेरेंस है बाकी सब स्टेट के साथ और इसमें हम इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन के uh, उसमें बात करते हैं अब देखते हैं कि ईच सॉवरेन यहाँ पे जो स्टेट है वो बेसिकली वो इक्वल होता है बाकी सब के बराबर होता है जो इंटरनेशनल लॉ के अकॉर्डिंग है और रिगार्डलेस की पॉपुलेशन कितनी हो एरिया या फिर इकोनॉमिक वेल्थ अब जो यू एन नेशनल नेशन का चार्टर था उसने ये भी स्टेट करा था कि यूनाइटेड नेशन है वो बेस्ड है ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सॉवरेन इक्वालिटी ऑफ ऑल मेंबर्स एंड इट एक्चुअली रिकोगनाइज द स्पेयर ऑफ डोमेस्टिक जोरिस्टिक्शन विच इज टू बी रिजर्व टू ईच मेंबर स्टेट so since the concept of sovereignty basically attributes to the supreme power uh, to the will of the sovereign it is by nature an absolute unlimited and perpetual power so this may however not be interrupted as a arbitrary power also so here we can also see that the absolute power is basically implied by sovereignty is not just intended to be exercised without reason or without invoking one's conscience or the sense of justice but or without the regard of any prevalent custom social values ideals or necessity of the common interest or public interest so due to that we uh, regard uh, all these factors that has been given otherwise the legitimacy and authority of the sovereign power is rapidly eroded and sovereignty may eventually be lost also so let's talk about the historical development now so historical development hum basically ye dekhengi ki kya factors responsible the jisse ha sovereignty jaisa concept aaya ab hum dekhte hain ki modern theory of state mein jo kya kehte hain jo hum uske jab hum modern theory of state ke bare mein baat karte hain uske sath sath bhi concept of sovereignty bhi aaya jisme hame jean bodin hai ek french writer hai jo 16th century mein inne sabse pehle formulate kara tha jo concept of sovereignty hai bahut hi systematically ab hum ancient period mein baat karte hain ancient period mein jo uh, philosopher the usme aristotle ne bhi ye bhi kaha hai ki jo supreme power hai wo located hai different bodies mein different bodies matlab different forms of government ke bare mein baat karte hain legislative executive or judiciary so here he, he says that he had not given the idea of sovereignty because according to him the power of the ruler or ruling body was limited by the law which existed above everyone ab hum aate hain middle ages mein baat karte hain jahan pe the conditions were like not very favorable for the development of the sovereignty because the emperor's power was just limited only to the one side of the rights of the feudal lords and on the other side the claims of the pope to the superior authority so therefore the idea of sovereignty made its appearance with the dawn of the modern period so ab jo modern period tha जो हम फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन की बात कर सकते हैं साइंटिफिक रेवोल्यूशन की बात कर इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन है 
तो यहाँ से हम मॉडर्न पीरियड की बात करने वाले हैं जिसमें साइंस ने बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट रोल प्ले करा और काफी सारी डेवलपमेंट्स हुई थी हमारे आसपास तो यहाँ से हम मॉडर्न पीरियड की बात करते हैं कि यहाँ पर ही तब से ये कॉन्सेप्ट जो सॉवरेनिटी का था वो आया था अब हम बात करते हैं जीन बॉर्डन की जिसने ये कॉन्सेप्ट दिया है तो बेसिकली ने डिफाइन करा है जो एब्सोल्यूट और परपेक्चुअल पावर होती है जो कमांडिंग इन अ स्टेट होती है एज द सुप्रीम पावर जो सिटीजन के ऊपर और सब्जेक्ट के ऊपर अनरेस्टेंड होता है बाई लॉ and we can also see that there are like places where the sovereign is above the law because he himself is the actual source of authority therefore this view is marked as very significant with the departure from the medieval outlook also so the medieval world is actually conceived with the law as a part of universal and eternal order and the kings councils and judges like who enforce law were themselves under law and they were not uh, just empowered to create it but it could only be uh, discovered by a study of custom and precedent so the idea of state as a source of law was therefore very alien in the medieval thought that we were talking about in the last slide so over here the modernists sought to reverse this position like by making the sovereign himself by the source of all the law and by defining the state is basically an aggregation of families and their common possessions that ruled by a sovereign power and by the reason and the boring basically argued over here that there in every independent community that has been like governed by law there must be some kind of authority so whether like residing in one person or several wherein the laws therefore we talk to themselves as the established and from which they proceed so over here bodin uh, treated the sovereign above the law and not just above the duty and moral responsibility so therefore he imposed two important limitation on the powers of sovereign first he was talking about that there are some fundamental laws such as uh, the laws that was make uh, made by the salic law of france which actually excluded females from dynastic succession also So, and the neck and the sovereign like could not lawfully abrogate such laws and the second point over here is that the limitation was that the private property that was granted by the nature of law and was inviolable therefore the sovereign could not tax his subject without their consent now let's talk about this one so basically like after a half century of bordens enunciation of the theory of sovereignty was given Grotius a Dutch jurist basically widely known as the father of international law also he made a very important co contribution to the subject or to the concept of sovereignty because he brought out some implications of sovereignty of the state in the international field like the independence of the sovereign state from any foreign control so even grotius sought to build a system in international uh, laws with the two distinct main foundation the first one is that the nations are subject to some uh, natural law or dictate of the right reason in the same manner as citizens because the society of nation is formed on same fundamental moral principle which guide the behavior of men in society and the second point over here is that he actually recognize a very voluntary law of nations that was based upon their free consent whether the ex libris um as uh, expressed in treaties conventions or any implicit as a uh, expressed in the usage and custom so here the grotius also like uh, brought about many moral uh, responsibilities to the sovereignty but he also tried to extend it to it the external sphere also and in the second place he also said that he made clear that the nation respected the international law not because it curtailed their sovereignty but because they are voluntarily uh, choose to do so of their free consent so in this way we can see the grotius like introduce the idea of external sovereignty to the existing idea of internal sovereignty also therefore this gave a uh, gave it a fuller shape over here now let's talk about hobbes so basically this thinker in the 17th century hobbes was an english political thinker and he actually developed the concept of sovereignty as an exponent of the theory of social contract and hobbes argued that the state was a product of the will of the people also so sovereignty over here is basically an attribute of state 
and its character is determined by the terms of social contract and as men emerged from the state of nature that was characterized by the law of the jungle and the ordinary form of a state to attain a proper order peace security and they create a sovereign for this purpose so they surrender like all the natural rights and the right to the stronger to express to oppress the weaker to the fall and to the that means to the sovereign sovereign and the surrender is completely final and irrevocable so basically how can we they ask for restriction or restoration for the natural rights when they had become a civilized men so defying with the authority of the sovereign would mean to the reversion of the to the state of nature and the state of anarchy law of jungle where the stronger will be free to the oppress the weaker and therefore the hobbes places authority of sovereign was beyond challenge now let's talk about the various characteristics of sovereign so over first we'll talk about the absoluteness so basically jean borden as we all know was the first exponent of sovereignty he said that sovereignty is absolute and perpetual power of commanding in a state so sovereignty is like often regarded as a absolute because it cannot be limited or restricted by any superior power or any authority and the will of the sovereign uh, reigns are supreme in their own state so now sovereign of his own uh, will pay due to the regard to the moral principles customs traditions and or the public opinion also but he is not just responsible to any authority or individual or group that has been similar or superior to himself similarly we can also see that sovereign uh, may pay due regard to the international law also by his free consent and not because he is like obliged to obey the commands of any superior state or international organization so over here the absoluteness of sovereignty is the logical outcome of the legal character also which may actually uh, which may not hold good in the political uh, sphere and nor would it actually govern the non legal actions of individual and the groups within the state and the second feature is permanence so over here the permanence of sovereignty is a a uh, quality of its absoluteness because the borden also tries to describe the sovereignty as a perpetual power because if the power is only being held only for a certain time then it does not matter how long but it is not just a sovereign power and he holds uh, it for that time is not a sovereign so in order to understand his the permanence of sovereignty it is necessary to distinguish between the state and governor government so the sovereignty belongs to the state and the governments may form or dissolve according their own uh, according their own established procedure but it can also be continuity of the state will be affected by such changes so the sovereignty also endures as long as the state maintain its independence and the quality of permanence should not be interpreted to mean the sovereignty is external eternal So on the other hand, we can also say that if a state loses its independence and is placed under the suzerainty of another state, then its sovereignty is also lost over here. Now let's talk about the universality. So over here, we can say that sovereignty is also universal and all uh, pervasive and all comprehensive quality in the sense that it actually extends to all the individual groups, areas, and things within a certain jurisdiction of the state also. So, if a state get, uh, grants a immunity or ex territoriality to any uh, such category of person, especially the foreign heads of states, UN official, foreign envoys, then we have ambassadors, staff, president, and workers, it is because of its free consent and not because of any external obligation or restriction. So, the matter of international courtesy is not of compulsion, but the concession that can be withdrawn at any moment. at the will of the sovereign and the international association and multinational corporations are operating within the territories of different states or also like try to subject uh, to the sovereignty of their respective states now let's talk about the fourth feature that is uh, in alienability so this is the in alienability is also an essential element of the state because over here the sovereignty cannot be transferred or given away without destroying the state itself 
so over here the liber has put it that sovereignty can no more be alienated than a tree can alienate its right to sprout or a man can transfer his life personality without the self destruction so when a state actually cedes to a portion of territory to another state the ceding of the state is not just wholly destroyed but from the point of view of ceded portion the original state no longer exists and sovereignty of a new state comes into existence so we can also see over here that this also proves that the sovereignty of a state over any other is not just transferred but also replaced by another state so according to hobbes you can see that when people emerge from the state of nature they actually try to create a sovereign and it is not a case of sovereignty being transferred from people to sovereign because in the state of the nature sovereignty did not exist at all so when we talk about the law he actually postulates um, postulates to surrender of some of the natural rights of people to the state on the condition that they are fundamentally natural rights to life law, liberty and property that actually will be protected by the state itself and it is not a question of transfer of sovereignty because the people themselves remain superior uh, supreme throughout in spite of the formation of the state and the rousseau system of thought is basically that the sovereignty is throughout held by its own general will and although the powers can also be delegated to the government and hence the sovereignty proves to be inalienable now let's talk about indivisibility so as sovereignty is an absolute power it cannot be divided between or shared by a different sets of individual our groups as we all know so in every state we can see the sovereignty is actually there uh, within a particular within the hands of a single body that is legally competent to issue some of the final commands to everyone so the division of sovereignty is not just bound to, to give the rise of inconsistent conflicting ambiguous or commands such as that but this condition is also not compatible with the very concept of sovereignty so a divided sovereignty is also a contradiction in terms that the principle of federal state is usually cited as an exception to the characteristics of sovereignty so here the federalism basically involves the allocation of powers between the federal government and the state government which are regarded as independent and they coordinate in their own respective spheres also now let's talk about the aspects of sovereignty so the first sovereignty is the titular sovereignty so if we see in the institute constitution monarchies like we can talk about uh, england or japan where the king or the king, where the queen or the king or the emperor is basically referred to as as we all know as sovereign kyun because um, kyunki yahan ke jo ruler hai वो एक नॉमिनल और टिट्यूलर हेड भी स्टेट में है अब यहाँ पे इनके पास कोई रियल पावर्स नहीं होती हैं बट इनके जो डिफरेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट होते हैं वो अकॉर्डिंग टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ स्टेट होते हैं अब यहाँ पे जो सॉवरेनिटी है वो उसको हम टिट्यूलर सॉवरेनिटी ही बोलते हैं उसके बाद हम आते हैं डिजरे एंड डिफेक्टो सॉवरेनिटी अब हम देखते हैं जहाँ पे रेवोल्यूशन होते हैं वहाँ पे एक सक्सेसफुल ओवरथ्रू होता है जहाँ पे जो प्रेजेंट एग्जिस्टिंग रिजीम होता है स्टेट का जैसे उसके थ्रू अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मीन्स के थ्रू जो इस्टेब्लिश नहीं होते प्रोसीजर में ऑफ रिप्लेसिंग जो एग्जिस्टिंग गवर्नमेंट को हम रिप्लेस करते हैं अब एक डिस्टिंक्शन यहाँ पे आता है फॉर्मल और एक्चुअल पोजिशन में कि यहाँ पे जो टाइम है एज अ न्यू सॉवरेन इज लीगली इस्टेब्लिश एंड रिकोगनाइज सो देर कैन देर कैन ऑल्सो एग्जिस्ट लाइक टू सॉवरेन पहला जो है वो लीगल सेंस में है हु हैज लॉस्ट हिज रियल पावर्स और जो दूसरा है वो फैक्टुअल सेंस में हु हैज नॉट येट बीन लीगली इस्टेब्लिश्ड अब इसका क्रिटिसिज्म क्या है बेसिकली क्रिटिसिज्म हम पहला क्रिटिसिज्म ये बोल सकते हैं कि जो कॉन्सेप्ट सॉवरेनिटी का है वो इवॉल्व हुआ था टू परफेक्ट द थ्योरी ऑफ मॉडर्न स्टेट बट इट शॉट टू बी फ्री द मॉडर्न स्टेट फ्रॉम ऑल दी ऑब्लिगेशन फ्रॉम अदर सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशन particularly we can talk about the authority of feudal lords and and the papacy and to basically establish all the dignity of the state in the proper international sphere so we here they try to proclaim the basic monopoly of the state and in deciding the public policy also by declaring the laws that basically binds all citizens in uni in unequivocal terms 
so it also instituted that the nation state as an independent entity if we look at uh, look at to them in the international sphere and they were not just bound by any organization that was superior to itself now let's talk about the popular sovereignty so over here we can see that popular sovereignty has been like um, in the ha has been vested in the hands of that has been a uh, determinant person or in or or under a body of person so in dono mein wo kisi ke bhi under hai aur ye kafi zyada organized hai precise hai aur isko hum recognize karte hain source of law ab yahan pe represent karte hain the will of state hota hai aur jo commands hote hain jo legally kafi zyada binding hote hain अब इसके जो डिसोबीडियंस होते हैं वो विजिटेड हुआ काफ़ी ज़्यादा पेनल्टीज़ के साथ कि हम फाइन देते फाइन लगाते हैं हम उस पर जो एक्चुअली डिसओबे करता है यहाँ पर अब हम देखते हैं कि ये काफ़ी ज़्यादा सोर्स ऑफ सारे राइट्स हैं हमारी सोसाइटी में एप्सल्यूट है अनलिमिटेड है और सुप्रीम भी हैं अब जब हम बात करते हैं पोलिटिकल सॉवरेन की तो इसमें हम बात करते हैं जितनी भी मेम्बर्स हैं एक कम्यूनिटी में जैसा जो लोग हैं जो आइडिया ऑफ सुप्रीम लीगल अथॉरिटी है उसको हम बेसिकली एक्सप्रेस करते हैं जो कॉमन टर्म हम यूज करते हैं वो है पॉपुलर सॉवरेनिटी अब जो आइडिया ऑफ पॉपुलर सॉवरेनिटी है उसको हम रिगार्ड करते हैं पीपल एज अ सोर्स ऑफ द अथॉरिटी इन अ प्रॉपर स्टेट ऑल्सो अब हम यहाँ पे देखते हैं जो ऑर्गन ऑफ स्टेट है वहाँ पे उन्हें एक्सरसाइज करना है सुप्रीम पावर को लॉ मेकिंग को और काफ़ और हम कैसे लॉ इन्फोर्समेंट कर सकते हैं देन एजुकेशन है हम ड्रॉ करते हैं इनकी लेजिटमेसी फ्रॉम द वेल ऑफ पीपल और उसके बाद हम देखते हैं डज नॉट जस्ट रिलाई ऑन एनी अन सुपीरियर लॉ और नेचुरल लॉ बट द रिलीजियस कमांडमेंट्स ऑल्सो एंड एनी अदर अथॉरिटी टू आ सर्टन वॉट इज रॉ एंड राइट सो इट ऑल्सो डज नॉट लुक फॉर एनी सोर्स ऑफ सुपीरियर रीजन अपार्ट फ्रॉम द माइंड ऑफ पीपल बट इट ऑल्सो इट रिगार्ड्स पीपल दम सेल्स इन दियर कोऑपरेट in the corporate capacity as the embodiment of the proper reasoning and the best judges of right and wrong and therefore we can see the real source of supreme authority so this doctrine basically comprises the cornerstone of the classical theory of democracy now let's look on to the historical uh, development so when we talk about the uh, rousseau he is actually regarded as the chief exponent of the doctrine of popular sovereignty but however we can see in its early indication it may found that in ancient as well as the medieval political thought uh, that even in the cicero also we can talk about that he actually tried to postulate that the ultimate source of authority can maybe be traced down to the aggregate people of the state and however when the roman empire became very powerful and it is it was conceded that it will uh, that the will of the em emperor was the source of validity of law so in the early modern age we can also see that the german jurist we can talk about also try to indicate the popular sovereignty in his own way that he try to conceive of sovereignty as a supreme power performing all the acts which are necessary for the material and spiritual welfare of the members of a state so in this view we can see the state is a product of contract or the consent of the people so over here therefore the state can also like exercise its sovereignty in order to secure all the welfare of its member so in this essence the sovereignty basically resides in all members of a state and although it may be exercised by a particular body from time to time now let's talk about the rousseau's concept of general will as we all know that the rousseau's idea of will cannot be just separated from thought but he actually tries to makes a distinction between the will of people that is also known the particular will and the will of community that is known as the general will so the particular will may either be inclined towards general will or it may turn against it also so when we look at an individual we actually look into that how well is he motivated by his momentary self interest that he is acting against the general will and that we use the uh, and we try to call this uh, as a actual will so rousseau's concept of popular uh, popular sovereignty also like stands for the supreme authority of the general will in a proper society so if we see that since the general will is actually reflected in the higher self of each member of a uh, community so it is morally very superior to any other expression of will so sovereignty of general will would also try to ensure 
the rule of the right reason in society which would also be able to constantly devoted to the common god the general will also is el elevated to the position of an absolute unlimited and inalienable sovereignty because it actually reflects the common will of the right people thinking so we uh, so over here we can also see that it does not basically rely on any principle of higher law example the natural law so the divine law and the divine revelation that actually regards it as a organized power of the people as a main source of all reason to determine that what is right and what is wrong so therefore over here we can see that it actually uh, tries to avoid the basic uh, best expression of the principle of classical democracy and however it is also like suitable for a very small uniform or a uniform community that has been like preferred for the that is also known as the direct democracy as rousseau himself has conceded so we can also see over here that in contemporary uh, large and complex society where the representative democracy is also very, uh, inevitable and it can uh, it can only be accepted by its symbolic significance also so let's conclude our whole um, let's conclude our whole presentation so basically we can see that rousseau tried to commend it on the popular sovereignty for like two reasons first that the uh, sovereignty should be founded on the first the will of the people and second the sovereignty should also be exercised for the public good and common uh, good so the reason that consider sovereignty as a right and the second it tries to consider it as a duty the principle of democracy calls uh, for its for this synthesize also but unfortunately we can see that some thinkers have confused the two and they try to treat both as the own reasons for the own formation of power of the sovereign so therefore uh, they have like opened the flood gates of absolutism and totalitarianism when the sovereign is not just bound with his duty he is no longer is also like capable of upholding the democracy and the principles of popular sovereignty may also be invoked to us uh, concede the sovereignty of state with an abstract entity and the government is also like comprised of human beings who are fallible in spite of their best education and training and if sovereignty is also like attributed to the government even if it is elected by the people therefore there is a possibility also that it may be misused and cannot be uh, ruled out 